now, 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 now. There is. Your companions have already reported to the command room. Will you be joining them? Welcome back, my friends. What news? Well, they have been stealing crystals from the kobolds. I thanks for solving the mystery and securing a meeting besides. Suffice to say, I accept Sickard's invitation, and I would have you join me as my guest. The future of Limza hangs upon the outcome of this meeting, and I would have the science present to bear witness. Welcome aboard, Admiral. I'll wager you don't remember me. Sicard, acting captain of the bloody executioners, at your service. It was kind of you to invite us. Now, if Captain Hillfear has a message for me, I bid you speak it. We have just the one demand. That you forget this bilge about making peace with the Beastmen. Ours is a nation of pirates. Always has been, always will be. Deny us our right to plunder, and you deny who we are. Too bloody right! Pirates till we die! What we want, we take! Piracy has no place in our future. What'd she say? Pirates have no place. Our nation has prospered through piracy, tis true. Yet it is but one part of our long and storied history. Centuries ago, our ancestors led a failed rebellion and were driven from their homes with little more than the shirts on their backs. In fear of their lives, they sailed south until they came to these shores. Finding the land occupied by kobolds, however, they were forced to turn to piracy in order to survive. And survive they did. But not so long ago, when the Empire threatened to crush everything we'd built, we set aside piracy and joined hands with our neighbors. This too, was in order to survive. And survive we did. Time after time we fought the Empire, and time after time we won, and through trade with our newfound allies, we prospered more than we ever did through pillaging and plundering. The Empire teeters on the brink of collapse. Ere long, provinces like Whirlit and Bosia and many others will regain their freedom. When they do, our matchless fleet will lead the world in a new golden age of commerce. The tides favor us, and the ocean beckons with her vast bounty. But if we cling to the old ways, this great ship we call Limsa will trade the boundless seas for a lagoon. 
So we scorn the world's wealth for a plundered pittance, then. Or shall we embrace change and thrive like our ancestors before us? The choice is yours. But if we are to prosper in the coming age, the whole of Vilbrand must become our ship, and a kobold and Sahagin our crewmates. Rousing words. Might even be some truth in them. But pirating's all we've ever known. And we ain't about to give it up just because you say so. Still, we're all the Minsons here and no one wants a war. So where does that leave us? Long before you became Admiral, I heard you was captain of the League of Lost Bastards. That true? If so, you'd know how we pirates settle our differences. A duel. Very well. As Admiral of Limsa Laminsa, I accept your challenge. Oh God. Oh my god. This ain't over. Not till one of us is dead. Finish the job. Or I will. Oh, is that the captain? Captain Elphir! Ye fool! Twas over afore it began! Captain! Seems the whelps have been yapping while their master was abed. Listen well, all of ye! Since the signing of the Galadian Accord, we all of us have been part of the same crew. The crew of the good ship Limsa Laminsa. At the helm of that ship is the Admiral. And tis she who decides where we sail. Was I not clear on that point? Or did you forget whose deck you stand on? Nay. Then why in the seven hells are you playing at? It's all we know, Captain. If we ain't pirates, what are we? You're bloody idiots is what you are. Idiots with your own lives ahead of ye. Ye can do anything ye want. Be anything ye want. We're pirates, I. And we pirates love our loot. But that ain't our first love. Our first love is the sea. The sea! And what she brings us! Freedom! So hold fast to that. Let the brine-crusted us that stands before you now 
be the last of them as knew naught save out of steel. And make of yourselves a new breed of pirate! Lad, I made ye me right hand because I saw something in ye. And I still do. You have the makings of a captain. All you lack's the belief. Well now, it seems we're of one mind after all. <laughs> Apologies for the misunderstanding, Admiral. We're with ye, wherever ye be headed. You have my thanks, Hilfir. Your choice of dueling pistol did not escape my notice. <laughs> Good old Annihilator. Ender of many a proud pirate's voyage. <laughs> Mistbeards vanished into legend, and it won't be long before I take my rest in the depths. Yet be that as it may, the old ways can only truly die. When we've dealt the Empire the telling blow. There'll be stormy seas ahead, no doubt. But I'm trusting ye to steer us through to the other side. Yay! Oh, we got that settled. So I had anticipated a duel. I did not foresee that Hillfear would intervene. But full glad am I am that he did. It would have been a shame to kill the boy. Instead, the whelp has learned a valuable lesson. And we have made peace amongst ourselves. All that remains is to do likewise with our neighbors. Why is the ship? Why is the ship? Why is the pistol on the ground? Now, I need hardly tell you, but any attempt to negotiate with the tribes is doomed to fail unless their minds can first be wrested from the grip of their gods. And so, in the meet in the meeting we seek to arrange with the kobolds, I would have you free their leader of Titan's influence. Give it to us. We will open his ears to reason. Yeah, my thanks. Ere we proceed, there is something you should know. Some 50 years passed when the Sahagan swarmed at our holes in ever great, greater numbers. Nimza entered into a covenant with the Kobolds. To men shall go the bounty of the sea, to Kobolds shall go the bounty of the land. An ostensibly equitable arrangement, ambiguously lacking in detail. Aye, inadvertently or not, the wording was ambiguous. We took advantage of it, moving in to claim the northern reaches of Lenosha, which the kobolds believe theirs. Bloodshed followed, and bloodshed, bloodshed followed, and bloodshed to answer the bloodshed. And on and on it went. To every elm of Vilbrand was bore the stain of our conflict. This is not history, you understand. It is a present, fresh and raw. And with their kindred's blood yet on our hands, we will struggle to regain the kobold's trust, even should we cure their temper. Admiral, you speak of obstacles we are like to encounter at the meeting, but as things stand, I see no reason why the kobolds would agree to a meeting in the first place. And so we must provide a reason. I will restore their crystal store. I will restore their stolen crystals to them, and personally deliver the cargo along with my opponent. Bait. They would welcome us in their midst, not to speak of peace, but to have you at their mercy. Aye, and given the wealth of crystals we will bring, I'll wager they will attempt to summon Titan there and then. Meaning a high priest will need to be present, to whom we could administer the cure. 
precisely. He is the fish I would catch, but he would not be alone. Nay, he will have guards on hand and they will lay down their lives to protect him. But a single death on the kobold side will jeopardize our chance at peace. And there my venture founders. Yet yeah, indeed not. What if we were to employ the conqueror's chain? Though we would still have to weaken the kobolds, it would allow us to subdue them without inflicting lasting harm. The artifact Miss Beard used to take goods and not life. Aye, that would serve. Well done, Marshal. So friends, what think you of our strategy? The effects of tempering are cumulative, and we may safely assume that the High Priest's exposure to primal influence is extensive. It will therefore take a great deal of ether to reverse its effects, not to mention time. Time during which Elise would be defenseless. Even should we all look to her protection, I am not convinced we could keep an entire army of kobolds at bay. But I'm happy to take the risk. It's not as if we have any other choice. Besides, it's what Tisleen would do. And had I not followed her example, we wouldn't even have a cure for tempering, much less a chance to bring peace to Vilbrand. I'm going to cure that priest or die trying. I believe it you. And I believe in you too. You and everyone. I know you'll keep me safe. It is settled. Then, uh, see to your preparations and make for Camp Overlook. We will join you there and on. What is the name of that song? I need to look up, like, the Shadowbringers OST. Find that song. I'm here. Are we ready? I thought I wasn't lying when he said I'd be defenseless, so I'm counting on you all to give me the time I need. Our sole purpose will be to keep you out of harm's way, so leave that to us. Focus on your own task. Indeed, and should you want for either, you need only say the word. Is that Gabu? Gabu, did you follow us here? There's something important I want to say to the High Priest. Express state, say. Please let me come with you, please. I'm sorry, but it's too dangerous. I need you to promise me that you'll stay here where it's safe, alright? My apologies for the wait. It took time, but we have secured our audience. All unfolded as expected. At the mention of my returning the crystals in person, the kobold suddenly remembered how keen they were to be reconciled. And so, in the glorious spirit of cooperation, we are to be received by Patriarch Zada of the Second Order, who awaits our pleasure in the novel, naval. If you are ready, let us proceed to Ugamora Mines at once. This etherite will bear us to our quarry. Which will he make to summon Titan? As I anticipate, we will halt the ceremony and restrain him. At this, at this, all hells will break loose and we will have an army of kobolds to entertain until Alizé's work, work is done. But remember, none must die. We weaken them and let Enzer do the rest. It is time. Get the course, my friends. I spy calmer waters beyond this squall. Let us do this. They still killing their own people.
Greetings, Patriarch. I am Merlwyd Blufisvin, Admiral of Limsa Lominsa. I come before you to offer my sincerest apologies for the many wrongs committed by my people against you and yours. <laughs> you were foolish to come here. Stupid, unwise foolish. The Great Father shall have your souls for your folly. Aye. Just as we thought. Now, Alize! Quickly! You don't need to tell me! Let none pass. We must grant her as much time as we can. Oh ho! Girl seeks to harm the patriarch with vile magics. Kill her, slaughter, slay. We must protect Alizé. You're in my sights. Oh my God! That's sick as hell. Time for the chain. Yes, it's ready. Go, Angelo. Ah, what sorcery is this? Is it your right? Tempering is too severe. I can't finish the job. One person's ether alone is not enough. Oh. <laughs> Aphrodite, let, let us lend Alizé our ether. Understood. Here you are, Alizé. Let's thank, thanks you too. I'll give it another try. Oh 
Okay, you got it. Oh god. Just a little more. So many of them. Oh god. Jesus Christ, he just fucking tank tanked them all. Oh, only twenty five or twenty five more. So, what's there? Sirs, please limit your ether. No matter before I came here, no matter what it cost me, Limsa will have peace. God. That's wrong, bud. Got you now. <laughs> There's a little more ether, just a little more, and I can finish this. Thank you. It worked this time, I promise. Did it work? Did it work? I said. What? What is the meaning of this? 
I'm sorry, but they died by your hand. You sacrificed them to summon Titan. Would that there were a cure for the victims of the Tempered. Gabu. Gabu! What are you doing here? Patriarch! Please listen to me! Hear! Heed! Listen! great father we have been summoning is false. He only hurts us and those we love. For a long time, his voice filled my mind. He told me to do terrible things. Awful, unspeakable, terrible things. But I didn't give in to it. And you mustn't either. There's been too much pain already. So please... End the suffering. What... What have I done? We share this child's desire, Patriarch. An end to summoning. For it spells naught but misery for both our peoples. For many long years, man and kobold have feuded over territory, pillaging and perishing for the earth beneath our feet. It may be said that we fought to survive. But what we have sown in blood, we have reaped in suffering, and it cannot go on. I would see us set aside the past and work together for peace. It was wrong of me to hurt my own in the name of the Great Father. Sinful, evil, wrong. But that doesn't mean there can be peace between us. Men cannot be trusted. The bounty of the land was to be ours, and yours the bounty of the sea. But you broke the pact. Violated, breached, broke. Unready as we were, what choice had we but to call upon the divine to rid ourselves of your tyranny? None. And I do not blame you for it. In violation of the spirit, if not the letter, of the pact, we took your lands for our own. The fault lies wholly with us. On behalf of all Lamincens, I offer you my humblest apology. I pray you'll find it in your heart to accept it. Yet I know an apology alone will not serve to make things right. So, we will revise the pact, to leave no room for doubt, and any who violate it shall face justice swift and certain. No, we won't be fooled. Not again. Please, hear me to the end. Fleeting though it was, there was a time when man and kobold abided together in harmony, in cooperation.
In those days, your people shared the secrets of smelting. Knowledge which allowed Limsa Liminsa to thrive. Much of what we have, we owe to the Kobolds. And so, for the good of all who dwell on this isle, I wish to make you an offer. We will bear your people's wares to every corner of the world and trade them in your stead. In return, we will bring you the bounty, not only of the sea, but lands both near and far. Whatever you desire, the Navigator as my witness, you shall have it. There will be no more man and beastmen. Just the crew of the great ship that is Vilbrand. And together, we will share in the wealth of the world. If you'll only accept our hand in friendship. We want to believe you. We truly do. But we believed you before and you betrayed us. Fooled, deceived, betrayed us. There are bad men, it's true. But there are also good ones. And the ones before you are the best of them. They were always kind to me. Caring, nice, kind, and I trust them with my life. Before I became Admiral, Hello, I was a pirate. I stole. I fought. I stained the sea red with blood. Did you unmute Such me? Is my past and I did I mute myself? I, I think However you much I yourself. might want to. How did I do that? Did I even press a button? What the fuck? I don't know. I, I, we were all deafened and then all of a sudden I saw you were undeafened. Oh, weird. That is death penalty. The pistol I used to pass judgment on my own sire when he fell thrall to Leviathan and betrayed his comrades. It's loaded. If you were to point it at my head and pull the trigger, I would most assuredly die. Though it isn't much, my life is the single most valuable thing I possess. If it will suffice to atone for past wrongs, take it. A single bullet to annul the old pact and my blood to write it anew. What comes after, I entrust to this man, my second in command. I know that he will do his utmost for the happiness of all who call Vilbrand home. Oh.
I do not trust you. Not yet. But Gabu does. And I will trust him. We want you to know that we respect your faith. There's nothing wrong with giving thanks to the land which sustains you. But summoning is different. Should you hear of anyone who would attempt it, we ask that you appeal to their better judgment. Or failing that, seek our aid. We're always ready to help. Many and more of my brethren are yet enthralled to the Great Father, just as I was. If you could free them too, I would be grateful. Appreciative, thankful, grateful. It is we who should be grateful, Patriarch. I thank you for affording us this chance. Yay, one step closer to peace. Oh my god, what is that? So it seems we have found a way forward with the kobolds. Next, we will help the second order to free their tempered brethren from thraldom. Flares is far from the only order, of course, and it will take no small amount of time and effort to reach the rest. But reach them we will, however long it takes. I would say that I was in your debt, but that has long been true. So instead, I will say thank you for helping us to plot a new course, not only for Limsa Liminza, but all Eorzea. Future is rewritten. Is that the name of the fucking patch? Whatever. Right. Let's return to the Rising Stones. Admiral, something strange is afoot at the floating city. Breathe, man. What is it? I think it's best you see for yourself. Please, come with me. Hmm. What could be going on? What in the world is that? Hmm. That don't look too good. A tower. You can see it too, then. I feared I was losing my wits. One moment I was patrolling as usual, and the next it was just there. Yes? This is she. I am. I... I'm looking at it. What? Understood. Send the Elder Seedseer my regards. Is there one in Gridania too? The communications officer. It seems this isn't the only tower. They've sprung up all across Eorzea. What the hell? Nothing more is known. Only that they appear to be of Garlean construction. Our allies on the Alamegan front are on highest alert. 
Forgive my directness, but would you join them? They may well need the help. Of course, Admiral. We shall make all haste. My thanks. I will return to Limsa to weigh our response. Look for Commander Hext when you arrive in Alamigo. And may the Navigator speed you on your way. What is it? It's Garlean, but looks like it's like emitting a signal with that boom. Yeah, that, that ring. Thank you for coming so soon. I'll send for Commander Aldin at once, and we can decide what to do about these infernal towers. Ha! Broken Preserve! What in the fuck? Oh my. It can't be. The palace! After them! Can't tell if that was fucking Daniel. I forgot his name again. You're here. Good. Fan Daniel. There you go. That fan Daniel. Looks like it. Well, 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 to be received by such an illustrious cast. <gasps> Why? Even the hero of the piece is here. I feel quite starstruck. Why did he change his coat? Is that a sigh? His body more like. You don't fool us. Oh, you saw straight through it. Anyone would think you dealt with Asians before. <laughs> Permit me to introduce myself. I am Fan Daniel, and may I say what a pleasure it is to finally make your acquaintance. What do you want? My, straight to business is it? Suit yourself. It is my intention to recreate the final days. To which end, I have distributed a collection of rather ingenious devices, or towers, which will, in time, give rise to the grandest of spectacle. I recreate the final days? The final days? But it was the Asians who labored to prevent them. You're quite right, though I would expect no less from one responsible for eliminating my unsundered colleagues. Honestly, the three of them were obsessed with restoring the one true world. As a sovereign individual, however, I never had much interest in such things. I mean, why bother when you're just another sundered minion? Admittedly, Elidibus was not convinced by that argument. But thanks to you, I'm finally free of his incessant nagging. Free to use my powers as I see fit to fulfill my heart's desire. Very flamboyant, aren't you? And my heart's desire is to lay this half broken world to waste, leaving nary a fleck of dust behind. What? Why would you want such a thing? 
Because I want wretched creatures who ask such meaningless questions to die! You! And you! And you! I want you all to die! And I want to die too! Oh, yes! I want to die and take everyone with me in a paroxysm of pain and suffering! I'm different, you see, from the ancients who clung to dear life and from you. So don't bother trying to reason with me. You will find I have no reason, or creed, or any such tripe. I just want to destroy the world. But please do resist with all your might. It will add to my enjoyment. Now then! Ladies and gentlemen, keep your eyes peeled, for the curtains have risen on the spectacle to end all spectacles. We, the Telophoroi, shall be your performers and this very star our stage. Telophoroi. Doesn't even. I just realized it doesn't have a head. It's got like half a head. you at the heart of the chaos while I wish only to destroy the world he exists solely to relive a certain hmm, transcendent moment with you and it is for that reason he would reduce all to ash pray see to it his dreams do not go unfulfilled for if you should disappoint him my trusty companion here whom I've dubbed Luna Bahamut, will burn your cities and everyone in them. Luna Bahamut, huh? Everyone out! My men will tend to the blaze. That was quite the entrance. And <laughs> damn. Thank goodness everyone's safe. We've managed to put out the fire, though not quickly enough to save the garden. Raban, can I leave it to you to send word to the Alliance? I'm going to take a unit and investigate the tower. We need to find out what it's for. We'll go with you. No, you won't. You'll rest. From what Merlewood tells me you're due some time off duty should we learn anything about the tower we'll be sure to share it with you until then i want you to rest very well but if you need our help don't hesitate take care both of you was this the end of five point quattro
Ah, you're back too. Good. We've received the reports from the Alliance. Since we are all here, perhaps those who bore witness to the events in Alamigo could treat the rest of us to a first-hand account. No sooner do we overcome one problem than another appears. It would all seem tediously predictable, but for the endless variety of our foes, this Fandanio sounds even more unhinged than his patron. Unhinged, perhaps, but no fool. For all his pantomime theatrics, he give away little about his plot. We know only that he intends to recreate the final days and that the towers will somehow facilitate. He also called his dragon Lunar Bahamut. I forget that little detail. And the creature did resemble the descriptions I've seen of the Elder Primal. It may be, but the fact that it answered to Fandania will suggest they are not one and the same entity. I think it more probable that it is some manner of s simulacrum born of Asian magics. Whatever it is, for now we can but work closely with the Alliance and remain vigilant. I believe that concludes our news. What of yours, Yashtola? I have, been to s I have been to see the Sultana, knowing how quick the immortal flames are to dispose of the tempered, I just did best to provide them with the cure first. As soon as I had sufficiently recovered, I traveled to Uda and delivered the pork seeds to her grace, along with detailed destructions on their use. <laughs> she looks so happy to fucking hold it. <laughs> Look at her. Yet my visit chanced to coincide with the arrival of some troubling tidings. The immortal flames had been on the cusp of agreeing to a truce with the Amaja when negotiations abruptly collapsed. The Amaja claimed that a number of their kind had been abducted and that men are responsible. Not as known of the perpetrators as yet, but as the immortal flames went about investigating the abductions, they came upon one of Fan Daniel's towers. On the subject of the towers, you may be interested to learn they are not an exclusively Eorzean phenomena. According to the Alliance, they have been sighted as far afield as Yansha. Then it will seem reasonable to assume that they are everywhere. We simply have not found them. Well, as you said yourself, we can do little but for now save remain vigilant. We are dealing with a dragon, ostensibly at least, and believe it would behoove us to enlist the aid of an authority on such foes. Estinian! Dinian, now just a moment. If he could, give, he could, he could, if he could be persuaded to lend us his lance, I would be the first to welcome it. But the truth is, we will struggle even to find him. Hey, <laughs> you let me and Crow worry about that. We'll sniff him out no matter where he's hiding. <laughs> if indeed he is hiding, we have ways of locating him, regardless. So if there are no objections, we shall depart at once. Are you getting hunted by two, <laughs> by two Lalafels? <laughs> well, rather than sitting around, I think I might go to each of the city states and educate them in the use of the porksies. They would doubtless appreciate it, but might you consider taking a moment to rest before leaving? You would be fresher for the tasks ahead. Well, my friend, our moment of triumph did not last long. <laughs> it was ever the way, the world often needs saving. And save it we shall. I for one do not intend to allow nihilistic madmen to take us all to the grave with him, not when the future holds such promise. Nay, I would do all in my power to protect those whom I hold dear, as you have always done. Yeah, down with nihilism. Futures rewritten. Bow, 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 bow.